Hello listeners and students at home. You are welcome to Kaduna State Ministry of Education, Television and E-Learning. My name is Obangozi Gloria and you are welcome to another segment of home, home management class. Today the topic we shall be discussing will be on table setting. At home, when we eat, we usually eat on the table. And there are so many reasons why we eat meal at the table, for comfort and for relaxation. Before we go on, let's define what table setting is. Table setting involves simple layout of the table for eating in such a manner that all the eating materials are provided in their correct places. What do we mean by that? All the eating implements, all the utensils, all the cutleries on the table are set, are fixed, are put on their usual position for easy reach of the guest or the person who wants to eat the meal at the table. Now, we go to the types points to be considered when we want to set a table. Number one point there is cleanliness of the surrounding, cutlery, table mats, as well as the table cloth. Yes, cleanliness is next to godliness, and no person or guest would like to eat on a dirty table because of what? Cross contamination or infection. So the eating environment should be clean. The cutleries should be clean. Table mat as well as the tablecloth should be free of any spots or dirt from food. We go to number two. Before you set a table, you should know the number of people you are expecting to eat on the table. To avoid confusion, if you are expecting two to three people, you know it, the, it is called what? Three cover. That three cover means you are expecting three persons at the table. This is very, very crucial in planning on setting of the table. They will have number of courses or dishes to be served. Is it a one dish? Is it a two course? Is it a three course meal? This should also be put into consideration because that will determine the kind of table you have to sell, set for three courses. They will also have type of party. Is it a party? Is it cocktail? Is it dinner? Is it buffet party? This also has to be considered when you are setting your table. If not, there will be confusion. There will not be comfort. All this must be considered. Then we go to types of table setting. Generally, we have two types of table setting. Number one, formal table setting. Number two, informal table setting. Now let's go to formal table setting. What is formal table setting? Formal table setting is the setting that is mainly done in standard hotel. Formal table setting is for occasions like dinner, very popular with standard hotels. And this formal table setting has to employ the services of a waiter and a waitress for a standard setting uh, sorry, standard what hotels. And they also have their peculiarities. Now, the eating implements are all must what, be arranged on the table. Number two, the courses must also what, be there. And then we have the example of a formal table setting. We can see the place card. What is it meant for? For the menu, the courses you have there. Then we have the water glass. For drinking of water, we have the wine glass. We have the what? Either for red wine or for white wine. Then we have what? The service plates. Then we have the cup and the saucer. Depending on the table you are setting. Then we have the napkin for protection. Then we have the salad fake. We have the dinner fake. We have the bread knife. We have the bread plate. We have the dinner knife and the teaspoon, the soup spoon. All these are to be seen on a formal what 
table setting. And these are only seen in standard hotel because you will not have time to do this at home. But in standard hotel, when you are taking somebody out for a dinner or you are invited for a luncheon, this is what you are expected to see depending on the type of party, whether it is cocktail, whether it is dinner, whether it is luncheon. Then we go to informal table setting. What do we mean by informal table setting? In informal table setting, these are settings at home. In the home, there are no much protocols. You don't need the services of a waiter or a waitress because dinner can be served at the table without the major cutleries set on the table. Only the major what, cutleries are set there. No protocol, no services of a waiter what, is employed. Because I know that in most homes, we don't have waiters and waitresses, only in standard hotel. Informal table setting. Setting is mostly observed in most homes and offices. No protocol, as I've said before, is observed during serving. Then, this is the example. From the previous diagram, we can see that there are much cutleries arranged on the table for a standard hotel. But here, only the major eating implements or cutleries are needed. Your water glass, your wine glass, your plate, your napkin, you can see, there are just very few. Not like a standard hotel or restaurant. This is just for the home. And in most homes, I bet you that most of these might not even be seen. Just the spoon and the cup, and that's all. That is example of what? An informal table setting. Now let's go to the requirements for table setting. We have the table mats. What are the functions or the uses of this table mat? This serves as a protection from the heat from the food to the table to protect the surface of the table from the heat. Then we have tablecloth and cover. Tablecloths are covered on the table. You can't just set a table on a, set a, a, I mean, a meal on a bare table. Tablecloths are meant for beauty, for attractive, and for what? For comfort. You can't set a table on bare table, but it has to be covered. And another name for tablecloth is what? Table linen. And then we have what? Cutlery. These include the spoons, the forks, and the knives. These are the eating implements. Then we have the tumblers for drinking water, wine glasses for wine, or any drinking vessels. These are also what placed on the table. And then we have salt and pepper cruet set. What do we mean by this salt and pepper cruet set? They are used. There are those that would like to eat pepper. There are those that will want. They don't always feel salt in their food, so they need that cruet set for sprinkling of what? Salt or pepper on their food. Then we have flour or centerpiece. Another name for flour is called what? A centerpiece. This is for what? For decoration. And any flour that is used should not be what? Too long so that guests should see themselves. And most preferably, natural flowers are needed. You don't need to have a plastic or a rubber flower, but a natural flower that will give out the fragrance during eating. Then we have serviettes or table napkins. These serviettes are for protection and also they should be what? Folded neatly by either putting them by the side of the table or inside the wine glasses. Now, rules for table setting. There are so many rules we must observe when we are setting the table. Number one, arrange the cutlery in order of use by placing the one that will be used first. The cutleries, the implemented the spoons, the facts should be what? The ones that will be used, depending on what table you are setting, whether it is for dinner or for breakfast or for lunch. So the first one to be used should be placed first. And then facts are placed on the what? On the left-hand side. And knife and spoon on what? On the right-hand side. The edges of the cutlery should be about an inch from the table. What do I mean by inch? You can use your thumb to measure. You don't place the fake or the cutleries just from the table. It should be an inch. Then you set. They also have tumblers and wine glasses should be turned up and drinks should not be poured in them. 
If I am your guest and before I come to the table, wines or water is already poured in the glasses, I will not drink. The wine should be poured in the presence of what? Of the guest. It should not be what? It should not be turned down, but it should be turned up. You can fill it with what? With your subject, which is neatly or attractively what? Folded. And then a flower vase may be placed at the center of the table or at the end. It should not be too high, just as I've said before, so that guests could be able to see themselves, to see one another easily. Then we go to the next one, which is what subjects may be folded neatly, attractively, and put on either side or in the drinking vessel or wine glasses. Then the cruises should be placed at the center for easy reach of the guests. And then a flower vase may be placed at the center of the table at the end. It should not be too high to enable guests to see one another. These are rules for setting the tables. The next one, which is what? Table manner or table etiquette. When we talk of etiquette, it is also known as table manner. Now, what do we mean by table manner? Table manner is the rules or the way we behave while we are at the table eating. The way guests should behave, conduct themselves while at the table eating so that you don't throw somebody or make somebody to, to feel repulsive the way and manner you eat. Number one, we should sit upright at the dining table. Do not allow your body to touch the table. And that is a bad posture when you're eating and you're leaning on the dining table to eat. It is not a good table etiquette. We should sit straight, upright, with our napkin, which is what? On our lap or on the chest, as we may choose. And then when eating, take just enough food that can easily go into your mouth. The way and manner we eat, as I said earlier on, will make somebody to feel repulsive. Take little quantity that you can chew with your mouth closed. Some people will so feel their mouth that by men looking at them, you see and know what they are eating at a particular time. Do not talk with food in your mouth. Close the mouth when chewing. And when you sneeze or cough, cover the mouth with the napkin so that you don't infect others. When sneezing, which we know is a reflex action, close your nose, cover your nose, sorry, with a handkerchief. You need not hurry over your meal when chewing. Hurrying over meal when chewing will lead to what? Indigestion. Chew your food very well, slowly, and swallow to avoid heartburn and also to avoid what? Indigestion. Another one is avoid stretching your hand across the table. That is a bad habit. Stretching your hand over to get something, either to get a wine glass or to get a cruet, please excuse somebody to pass it on to you. It is wrong for you to stretch your hand over somebody's food to get something you want. The next one is avoid selfishness on the table by considering others. This is really a matter. There are those that when they go to the table, they are very, very selfish. They will not care about who is on their left or on their right. They want to get it all to themselves. That is selfishness. Use your eyes and look around. How many pieces of meat is there? How many are you to take? Take one and allow others to get before you get two. Avoid picking your teeth with your finger. Use the toothpick decently. There are those after eating, you see them using their hand or their fingers to pick their teeth. That is very, very wrong. 
it is repulsive and it, it, what? it might even transfer germs into your mouth if the hands is not washed. Avoid doing that. And if you must pick your teeth, do it decently. Not opening your 32 for everybody to see that you are picking your teeth. You should do it what? Decently. If you must also talk, you must speak in an undertone. You must not shout at the table. Why? To avoid accident. So many people have choked on the table while they are eating because they are talking. So avoid talking. If you must speak, it should be in an undertone. Let's go over to what we have learned today. We started by defining table setting, what table setting is. And we said that it is a simple layout on the table with all the eating implements arranged in a what? In their right position for the guests to eat. We also went on to mention that we have two types of what? Table setting, which is formal and informal. We also explain formal table setting as a table setting that is done in a standard hotel or restaurant. And here, that all the eating implements must be arranged before the arrival of the guest. And here, their peculiarities is that it is only done in standard or hotel or restaurants. And the table must be set before the arrival of the guest. And also that the services of a waiter and a waitress must be what? Must be involved. These services of a waiter, a waiter is a person who serves meal. They are what? Employed in what? In these hotels to do what? To serve meals. That is for formal table setting. Then we go to what? Informal se table setting. We say these are mostly used in the homes. No protocols. Only the major eating implements or cutleries are set on the table. And then it is also used in some offices where foods are being dished out on a tray or packed for what? For workers to eat. And then we also say that in this informal service, table setting, no protocol. Just what? The major implements. Then we go into what? The types of, I mean, the standard table setting, which is formal. We showed it that all the eating implements are arranged there. While in informal, only few, you can see them in the last lesson. Then we also went on to mention the requirements on the table. These things are needed before we say that a table is set. These are the materials we use for setting our table. We have our tablecloths. We have our table what? napkins. We have our placemats. We have our cutleries. We have our flowers. We have our salt and pepper cruets. We have our centerpiece, which is the flower. And then we also mention, importantly, Factors to consider when I'm setting a table. The cleanliness of the environment matter. Cleanliness, as I said earlier, is next to godliness. Nobody will want to eat on a dirty table. There are so many disadvantages that is incurred in when one eats on a dirty table. One, one can what? Be easily transmitted. That is cross-contamination. And it is what? A trough. It is an eyesore for one to eat on a dirty table. And then we also say that the table, what you must mention, or you must know the number of people you are expecting. If I don't know the number of people I'm expecting, I wouldn't know how much I will be what, or the quantity I will cook, or the type of dishes I will serve. So the number of people expecting is also important. The number of courses. Is it a one dish? Is it a two course? Is it a three course meal? This also has to be into what, put into consideration. And then we also have to know what kind of party. Is it breakfast? Is it dinner? Is it cocktail? Is it luncheon? All these ones will guide you in setting the table and all the things you need in setting the table. Now, listeners at home, we have come to the end of our lesson today. But before I go, I will leave you with some assignments to keep you busy during the week. Number one, A, you have to define table setting. B, state and explain two types of table setting, as we mentioned earlier on. 
Now, 2A, mention five requirements for setting a table and their uses or their functions. If you are mentioning five, you are giving me five of their uses or functions. Then, what is table manner? As I told you, that table manner is also table etiquette. Thank you very much. We'll be meeting in the next class. If you have any question or any observation, please reach me on this number, 0806-594-5214. I take it again, 0806-594-5214. I remain your home management teacher, Obangozi Gloria. Thank you and God bless you.